in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed poor people always see challenges as stumbling blocks and obstacles they hate challenges because challenges expose them to the fact that they are not there is a need to improve themselves and they hate it because they are unwilling to accept the fact that they need to improve you see let me tell you you are really poor if you are embarrassed by a, a situation that will push you to grow poor people love being local champions they hate challenges that's why they fight anybody better than them who comes around their vicinity have you seen people like that the moment they are shining and they see somebody who comes and is more competent they fight him because the person's competence will reveal a weakness in them but great people associate themselves with those who challenge them the bible says to provoke one another unto godliness if you are the best among your circle of friends, it's a sign that you are a serious local champion. Nobody is inspiring you. Remember, I told us, I don't know if he was here or in one of the meetings. If this is a class and we write a test over 100 and the highest gets 14, was he the highest? But did he pass? And now the person says, I'm receiving speech and prize because I'm the highest. What did you get? 14. And then he takes that same result to write Y and, and get F. And says, no, it's not fair. I used to be the highest in my school. That's not the issue. What was the standard? Are you seeing that now? So you can compare yourself with mediocres and because you are the best among them, you think the gates of prosperity will just open. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. There is a cutoff point in life that you must cross for this money to enter your hand. Right? Now the formula for wealth. Remember the formula. I told you this is the grand formula for wealth. Pastors don't teach it because most of them don't know it. They think that the reason why they are prosperous is because they are preaching the gospel. We establish that that, that is an incomplete truth. It's a lie. No pastor is prospering just because he's preaching the gospel. It's not true. Any pastor that tells you that is simply because he doesn't know why he's prospering. It is not because you are a preacher that you are prospering. And at the same time, it's not because you are a preacher that you are poor. Let me use the opportunity and balance this. How many ladies have been praying that a man of God does not come close to them because men of God have been associated. The moment you say you are a poor person, they say, you went to school to read all of this just to be a pastor as if it's a course. And people say, ah, may God that sent you go with you. And the lady who is going with you, I pray for you. You see, all those kinds of pity. What? What? <laughs> What gave us this wicked mindset? If you come and say, Daddy, a pilot asked me, I say, are you joking? What did you tell him? Say, I'm thinking about it. Say, are you crazy? Go and answer him and let's change our story. But the moment you say a pastor, say, ah, pastor. What did you tell him? I said, yes. I, oh, we have, you see that is a mindset. And that mindset has made many pastors to try to be rich anyhow to prove to the parents that when I married your daughter it was Gary you gave me your house but come and see what God has done you never get rich just because you are a preacher you get rich because of what the formula that I taught you and this is the formula that the amount of money we receive your wealth or your income will always be in exact proportion to three things number one the demand or the need for what you do your ability to do it and the difficulty in replacing you this is the formula for wealth 
Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it's there. The amount of money you receive, your wealth or your income will what? Always, don't forget, always be in exact proportion to the demand or the need for what you do. This is why pastors are rich. Because what they are teaching, there is a need for it. Are you seeing that? Your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone. That you have skill and proficiency enough to do it well. And then number three, the difficulty in replacing you. The degree to which it's difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This is the exact formula for wealth. It will work for anybody, any day, anywhere. It's a principle. Unfortunately, preachers just tell you, tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do. Then favor will come. But because you do not understand, you will come and testify. Praise the Lord. I gave tithe. Or I dropped a seed in miracle service. And now somebody brought one million. The question is, will you remain a millionaire after three years? Two weeks after that testimony, you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed. Say, I refuse to be poor. Shout it, I refuse to be poor. I make up my mind to be wealthy. See, what I'm going to show you tonight if you remain poor after this series, you were not fair to yourself. I'm being very sincere with you. When I show you what you're about to learn tonight, see, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing now. People pay millions of naira to hear half of what you are hearing. I have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth. I got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas. He's a living faith pastor. And he stumbled across the wealthy place, part two. Just the part two. And I heard that when he listened to it, he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them. And say, I've been a businessman and I have never had this. This is somebody into oil and gas. He said it changed his mind completely. And now you are here seated and you are just nodding. Many of our parents, if they had one tenth of what I'm telling you, I promise you they would have been billionaires. See, this, this thing is, is, is so magical that no matter how dull, it's not left to your personal intelligence at all. This is, this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing. If it was just a product of the Y, the X, intellect, some people would be disadvantaged. But it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy. Is God speaking to us? So the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this. And we did a little personal evaluation. Take note of that. Let's go straight to the teaching of tonight. The wealthy place, part three. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to paradise. I'm on my way, on my way. On my way to better day, to better day. I'm on my way, on my way. To better day, to better day. Multiple streams of income, right? Tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income. I pray you value it. I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it. I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering. See, I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out and um, the greatest reward 
that I can receive for this is not one million, it's not ten million, it's not to say come and take a car or take a house. That's, that's not my concern. The greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives. For me, this is the greatest consolation. No matter what you buy or sow into my life, it's as irrelevant as whatever. It will really grieve my heart if after this teaching your finances does not change. I don't know what to tell you. Praise the Lord. Because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires. Billionaires. All of them. Every single one of them. If you have ever admired them, this is the key. I've reduced the work for you. All the tens and hundreds of books, seminars, videos, and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive. If you don't act on it, there's no reason why you should blame God. Unfortunately, I know that not all of us will act on it. It's a sad truth. That's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Meaning there are people, no matter what they hear, they will not change. And the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us. They will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes. Put your right finger. There's something I'm going to bring out and shake. Many of you say my, my story will change because you like things that don't commit you. You see why we like fetish things? Africa for that matter. They say turn around and slap something three times. They go, it's done. The man leaves rejoicing because that spirit of laziness we hate it. Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it. And you say, really? Just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa, inheritance. He died and left it for me. <laughs> That's why we love that scripture, the wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written, wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born. Is that true? That scripture was even written before colonialism. And those who quoted it died without touching the wealth. My Bible says, God gives to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge. And then he gives to the unbeliever to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer. We think that it's just because we are singing praises and tithing. Then Dangote will get up one day and say, um, Shahoma. There is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Um, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. What? What an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline. Right? We see faith. We see patience. You leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night, I've told you preparation takes time. It's manifestation that is instant. We talk about Joseph becoming the prime minister. 
we forget that a woman lied that he raped her. Do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny? We forget all that one and we just say in one day, Joseph came up. From the day he helped someone to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him. Yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. We are the ones who have deceived you. Pastors. Pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently, but very wrongly. And we must admit it. I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy. Why? Because all we do is copy and paste. I go for a pastor's conference. I hear what a man of God I honor says. And you see, the fact that you are... Um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law although he does not know it, so he is rich. And he thinks the reason why he's rich is just because he's anointed. No, sir. This is the reason. So many people are under pressure. If I must be rich like my daddy or papa, I must be a pastor. Right? So there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry, racing to make sure they start churches in a hope that if I have plenty members, imagine what it will translate to. Let me tell you something funny that someone told me. I think it was a year or two ago. We were somewhere and I paid for something and the person looked at me. He said, man of God, you are the people who enjoy ministry. See all the plenty crowd in Koinonia. You see, you see why he's poor? Because in his mind, he's saying, Abba, everybody, prophets of him, everybody gives you 10, 10,000 or 1, 1,000. You see that? On Koinonia database, there are about 6,500 people. Multiply that one times, even one, one. This is how poor people think. They just say, Kai, apostle, tell us the truth. You are enjoying. See? <laughs> if that's what you are thinking, how much have you given me? How much have you given me your personal seed? No, that's wrong. That's not how you think. That's not the reason why men of God are prosperous. Multiple streams of income. Let's go to the business of the night. Are you blessed? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. So Sasa ki buchi Sasa ki buchi Sing it one more time Sasa ki buchi Verse 10. Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us, media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon. That which is, that which compassed the whole land of Havila, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river. And then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it, there was gold. And the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this, and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries 
never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry. But an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust recession proof financial life multiple streams of income the greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education and then goes to the university to study for maybe four five six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates, the first thing in his mind, now please don't get me wrong, just follow me, I'm not against job. But the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed. It's not his fault, it's not her fault. The system designed you that way. Are you getting me? So the moment you finish, the first question elderly people ask you is, uh -uh, you are finished now. You say, yes, say, so where are you working? Not what are you producing? Not are you deploying your potentials? Where are you working? So it trains you to serve. It trains you to work. Now the trouble is this. The average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in Nigeria ranges within 50 to 100,000. Is that fair enough? That's about the amount, right? <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money, it cannot fund your vision. Are you getting the point now? A job was never designed to completely fund your assignment. Getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle. Please listen to me operating under one stream of income i don't care how successful that stream is is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle that's the reason why many people never have enough now you are working and they think the problem is that their paycheck is just hundred thousand then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250 maybe 350 some people never even earn that much and then they find out that things do not change right because of parkinson's law that your need will rise to meet your level of income the meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama food is that true so while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000 you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira but you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira so your need your your expenses will rise with your level of income you were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it and then you forgot that you are going to get married you thought your wife was a toy you don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat a body to dress and then you had the gods to get her pregnant here comes your twins see that yet hold on whether you call them children or adults financially they are three human beings are you getting me regardless of their level of consumption they will still take something out from you and then you have a dog oh and then you have goats you see we, you don't know that all the once it is a living entity it must consume you have been counting yourself alone are you getting the point now now the trouble is there is nothing called job security job security is an illusion you know what job security is 
job security means that you are working in a place where um, your your stay can be fairly predictable that you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there in the Nigeria of today and in the 21st century the concept of job security does not exist praise the Lord everybody say hallelujah say I got a federal government job which one civil defense and you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years I will be there you really think so see that so we find consolation oh I'm working in a bank and all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you sorry we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go what did I do sir? I said no 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 you didn't do anything we really appreciate you in fact your services are well needed can you leave I remember somebody who got a job I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel one of these um, telecommunication companies he was very happy at the point he was preparing for his marriage he prepared based on that budget then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something and they told them they will share you either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200,000 and off you go and he smiled and collected the 200,000 because you see when you are poor you think 200,000 is a lot of money until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself you know, <laughs> will finish everything and then you find out that you are I will never forget a few days to his wedding he refused to come to the place where the wedding would take place I had to call him and say where are you he said I'm so so pleased I said leave that place right now and come what is all that can't be can't run away just come and trust God hmm. that's very true nothing in this world will satisfy this is a part of the song I love. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Every mundane, listen, the Babylonian system, this cosmos, the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich. It was designed to strangle you to death. That's why I like that song. It's the cup that will never run dry. Jesus, you're the You sing just that part one more time. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people why do we need multiple streams of income number one to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance at all seasons to ensure abundance all seasons please let me have four people I want to use them to just um, make an illustration three four people let me thank you just stand here guys watch this let's call these guys different streams just stand and face me thank you watch this if this is the first and only stream of income you have let's call this a job right We'll identify what the others are shortly but let's assume this is all you have your job let's even call it a nice place NMPC that's where many of us dream of or Shell or Chevron or whatever it is you want to call it right watch this this is all you have number one it was never designed to fund your project and number two your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning it's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant if you were working in nitel in the 90s you would be happy because nitel was invincible i mean they were the only telecommunication company you would imagine that working in nitel by now you would have been the boss 
only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions remember when they used to use card you get a card and then you load it 200 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it you know and then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping only for you to go and buy another one imagine within the last 10 to 20 years the transition that has happened so for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years ten years has turned to fifteen years and many of us look around and we say daddy I grew up knowing you not to work and they say I've been waiting uh, even last week I submitted my CV and look at this he started that when you were five years now you are 25 for 20 years he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job one stream the beauty of multiple streams is this watch this the the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream are you getting what I'm saying now there is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice I'm sorry to say it, but most of the civil servants in Nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say Kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset so they say it's true times are hard but the truth is they are, they are, they are on heaven they are in heaven heaven on earth you see that so you find out that this person is here god forbid his car is stolen his salary alone was designed to take care of the family but because there is another stream in two or three months he has bought another car for some for somebody who collected he was loan from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million you have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car you know you are finished whether you are to go for work or not you must go because if not for anything that loan must be paid out of the 2.5 you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000 you know that you are, the journey is still far you cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are so you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning that's why they vent the anger on you they get up and look at you one two three four five six children now the seventh one has come there is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank they now cut our salary from 200,000 to 150 and the man is saying where is my life going see every man you have seen was not like that every man you have seen who is angry beating his wife I can tell you if that's how he toasted the woman she would have told him no something made them happen notice men from 50 years and above 
That's why people don't even remember Father's Day. Because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked. It's not their fault. It's the inability to learn what I'm teaching you. And if you don't learn it, I guarantee you in the name of the Lord, you are on the way to becoming exactly like that. Absolutely. In fact, it will be harder because the 21st century, living in the 21st century right now, is a lot more difficult and complex. Right? Well, if you factor in terrorism, if you factor in wickedness by people, put in all these factors, humanly speaking, that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time. Your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams. So you are an ocean receiving from many streams. If one stream dries up, there is another that can complement. While you're working on that one, then there is another. There is no millionaire I know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people. Except those ones. But there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire. And trust me, I've met a number of them in my life. None of them operates under one stream. It's poor and average people, civil servants, that operate on one stream of income. You calculate everything, what the father and the mother is getting. For some, it's not even up to 100,000. And yet, the school fees of one child is 75,000 or 50,000 or even 30,000. Why would the man not be angry? Do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria? Have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry. Somebody will be moving and just kick something. Oh, and he just, stress. Don't laugh. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time. By the end of this year, they will tell you, you have come of age. And uh, we have seen how God has helped you thus far. From now henceforth, you are on your own. That's when it will dawn on you. You will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors, sincere people, very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of confession. Very funny statistics. Multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century. Activating multiple streams of income, hear me brothers and sisters, is the key to surviving the vicious tide. The vicious tide of economic hardship because it will happen. You have not seen recession yet. More will come. It's in your Bible right talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron it will happen you can't stop it you can only exempt yourself i choose to exempt myself so i rather pay the price now and exempt myself hallelujah bless you guys thank you so the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another now watch this I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income write two words down one cash flow please quickly let's save time we have to finish and um, what we have one cash flow number two write capital projects one cash flow two capital projects You are not, listen, you are not 
truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things watch this cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure is that true capital projects or the money the income for capital project talks about the resource the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building you know school fees of your children and and all of that savings and so on and so forth now watch this our parents were taught so much about long-term projects so they bought land right they have cattle they have goats they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects but they did not make arrangements for cash flow so you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency you will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not they didn't prepare for today they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow are you getting that now so they forgot that there will be needs how many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke he may say i don't have money you think he's joking but truly truly there is nothing that's a poor financial life yet he has land right yes he has resources who owns this container he's the person who owns this coca-cola depot he's the person but there's no provision for this now the trouble is in a bit to remedy that the younger generation our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow you see the mistake so i need money now i want to buy the watch of twenty thousand now i want to buy the trouser now so you see somebody and say man this guy is rich the watch of twenty thousand shoe of fifteen or twenty thousand you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing two hundred thousand and you are beguiled to think he's very rich still everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what i'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are eight years at eight years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they would die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed i'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results watch people that graduate everybody wants to show i'm working i now bought a car a bmw and um, i don't i no longer use the road i now fly i fly i fly around i'm flying to this place i'm flying to that place and then you carry your phone and say this is this is iphone iphone what iphone 6 have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth and then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich that's why every rich man will look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that ask me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all these were glittering you are you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today you will enjoy today if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow today get set for hunger are you getting what i'm saying 
So my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for wisdom. The key to activating multiple streams of income. Write this down. You do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses. Now, I listen to business people a lot and I've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences. But the problem here, watch this. For many people, the danger huh, is that they just tell you, go and start up a business. Aside from your job, do something else. That teaching is very sincere but misleading. If you have received that teaching, I want you to throw it away now and listen to what I'm about to teach you. Because for many people, that's, that's the circumference of your business seminar. Are you getting blessed? So they've told you, together with the job, start something. Anything, just start. No, sir. You will start and fail and fail woefully. Write this down. God's system for activating your streams of income. I want to teach you the kingdom system. There is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration, ends you in penury, or you will be rich, but at the expense of your salvation. You will be rich, but at the expense of very important things in your life. Everything that we do we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom. And this is where men of God must balance. I believe in, in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas. But please hear me. You must be careful. Not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook, line and sinker. Many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word I don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs chapter 3 The book of Proverbs very quickly. Eighteen verse sixteen. Quickly, it's a popular scripture we always talk about, but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time. What I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life. Proverbs eighteen verse sixteen. Let's read on. It says, "A man's gift." Please listen. Please pay attention. A man's gift does what? Does two things. What's number one? It makes room for him. Is that true? What's number two? It brings him before. A man's gift does two things for him. It gives him opportunity and it gives him access. Write it down. Your gift does two things for you. That is very vital in producing finances in your life. It gives you opportunities and then it gives you access. Access. Entrance before the great. A man's gift. So how do you identify the streams of income in your life? Many people have been taught they, so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this, this. No, 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 no. no. There's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea, you will succeed. You see the mistake. This is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot. 
write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources is God helping us write this down every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income how true every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream look at david for instance almost every gift the bible identifies in david later became a stream for him his ability to play right his ability to be faithful in service his leadership skill everything was utilized in his life i'm about to make a statement that is very striking maybe controversial especially for pastors i want you to listen to me do not let men box you into one stream and stop you from exploring other streams don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream if you are not careful people can put you in a box they know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor there are other streams crying for expression but the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor there's a lot that i want to say here how many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials with great leadership potentials there are other streams of income that can find expression but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there why because people say you are a pastor and the meaning of that is remain there be poor there and die there this kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century you cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side and you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur are you getting my point there must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century are you getting blessed is god helping you there are many pastors i say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating god's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning twenty thousand with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again 
and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he's the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed this has brought a lot of problems for people especially those in ministry listen to me every potential you have that God put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the Lord without giving it expression every gift in you I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential his majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed praise the Lord there are so many things that's why many pastors are poor that's why they are broke one of my greatest mentors dr miles munro a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society utilized his potentials as a pastor he was the senior pastor and the founder of bahamas faith ministry international and yet at the same time brothers and sisters he was a consultant for 16 presidents how many a consultant an advisor to 16 presidents at the same time he was so notable the bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador imagine that and then at the, at the same time he owned an aircraft company not aircraft they are busy shouting that people are buying jet many of you may not know let me explain it to you what it means he he, he not own one aircraft Boeing 737 no 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 he owned a fleet of aircraft the very company that deals in it and yet he was a kingdom man he lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven that's why he was a man of integrity he was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need why will you steal church money for what how much is the money are you getting the point i tell you the truth not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say it's like you are hungry you fasted for three days and then they make hot food nice food rise up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if they are conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth because they have inconvenienced too many people and God is helping us tonight say after me in the name of Jesus I am gifted shout it in the name of Jesus there is a gift upon my life there are graces upon my life there are abilities upon my life and I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income even if God tells me to drop ministry today I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams are you getting me before God called me I was doing something is that not true you see many of us act as if oh God found people lazy go and read your Bible everybody God called into ministry he called from he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something Moses was standing his father in law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak. Right? There are so many things. There are books to write. I have different thoughts on different areas. I can document my persuasions. There are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up. 
So don't you see a man of God rich and just think it's church money or just think and think hey, are people not dashing their money? You see articles blackmailing men of God all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has as though he's not supposed to be blessed. People are arguing and complaining about one jet, two jets. My goodness, I don't know what will happen by the time we come. If we need 100 jets, we will buy all of them. I guarantee you. Very unapologetically. See that? You can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? He wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose. Just one book. And that book brought him $4 million. Multiply that by 210 Naira there about. That gives you the equivalent in Naira. Because he deployed his writing potentials. It became an added stream of income. When people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million, I said, come on, give the man a break. He didn't steal anybody's money. Why will I be worth 10 million, 20 million? 100 million and not live in a house. How much is 1.2? How much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million? Don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick. Their tape ministry, the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime. Just the books. Bishop Oyedeko, for instance, I hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books. And there are at least 60 books he has written. How many of them are bestsellers? Yet we, we, have, we are the first to criticize people and run down men of God and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom. See, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask, not let him criticize those who are walking in it. Hallelujah. Ministry for me alone, with all the blessings of ministry, is only one stream of income. There are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed. I will never be poor. It's not about being a preacher. It's about realizing that once there is a demand for what I do, and I train myself in the ability to see, to do it. When you are sleeping, the wealthy people are awake studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them please i want to say this koinonia from today never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again you will never be like what you resent anything you drive away from your life you can never be like it honor is the seed for access Hallelujah. I'm friends to many, by the grace of God, many wealthy people and many millionaires. I'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions. See that? This is very important. But then let me, let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing. Now, I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this.
the trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different aspects of your life. That's the reason why God fragmented himself into different aspects. You cannot know Rafa by studying Jaira. Jaira is a dimension itself. Rafa is a dimension itself. Sikenu is a dimension itself. Is that true? El Shaddai is a dimension itself. But all of those names belong to one person. I am. So he said, who do men say that I am? And they were calling different dimensions of him. As a, as a man of God, you are dimensional. While it is true that you do not stay on one place, you must know where the boundary lies. Never carry business into church and go and manipulate people. No, it's wrong. Very wrong. If you are here as a man of God and you are doing it, stop. Stop. You must give people an opportunity to make their decisions. They are not daft. Of course, I understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity. Do you know why I'm telling you this? Because there are some things I may not be able to share here. But see, the business world is a lot different from ministry. In the business world, you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves. As a man of God, you can ruin your church in one moment. Right? I know there was a situation that happened in, in one church down in Abuja. It's, it's one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of God but you must give them room to build their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves are you getting what i'm saying is god giving us wisdom this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says i'm a lawyer i have some land i am a this i have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of god define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there now there are other platforms you can create like Sunday Adelaja who created a lot of business platforms. If you want to do anything that is business in the church, set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it. Spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this not in the name of the church but at their own risk. That way whatever happens, the integrity of the church is preserved. 
Is God teaching us? I told you I struggle to teach you what I'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands. But this is giving us wisdom, especially for those of us who are leaders. Don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people. That they are praying in tongues and they hug you. You don't yet know their attitude towards money. They will stab you and kill you. Is God helping us? Let's continue. So your streams of income should be around your giftings. Should be around your abilities. Your streams of income. Now look up. I want to teach you something please. Very important now. Write this word down. Time. T-I-M-E. Write this word down. Time. Your life on earth is measured in time. Don't forget this. Your life on earth is measured in time. That means whatever you give your time to, you have given part of your life to. The time you are giving your employer or your job, your office, is part of your life you are giving to them. Write this down. Focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time. Focus. There is only limited time you have. Everybody has only 24 hours. You cannot have 25 hours in a day. So if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation, you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective. Wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time. Let me give you an instance. If I write a book right now, if I write one book, right, I communicate my thoughts. Maybe books on, there are so many books that I have, I'm just waiting for the Lord to release me to begin to write books. I know many of them will be bestsellers because I will not just get up and write books. I will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them, I have the content, but what of the marketing? What of the publicity? Never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best. You will minimize mistakes. You will make instant progress. So I can write a book right now, for instance, and then release it. And I can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore. Doesn't know me, has never seen me, may never see me, right? And then income is coming into me. Millions and millions of income coming because I'm documenting my persuasions. And there are many areas I can write on. I can write on the anointing. I can write on wealth and prosperity. I can write on leadership. All the areas that I know God has granted me grace in. I'm just showing you how one stream. Now I can be here and be effective in koinonia. Another thing for instance, if I build an estate, you see that? If I build an estate, there are people renting, I don't even know them, I've never seen them for instance, but I'm here teaching the word. My time is being invested to the principal thing I've been called to do, but there are channels that are bringing me in. Are you getting what I'm saying now? very important if i teach assuming that we're selling our teachings imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry but god instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day this is the benefit every time you dispense value you must be rewarded whether you sell it or you give it free it's a law so we are not at a loss at all now imagine that today's message, the media department will now package it, the wealthy place, volume one, volume two, volume three, right? And then maybe each of them is sold now. You can imagine that. And all of that is happening. So people are buying it somewhere, whereas you are still here. As much as possible, 
value your time. Your time is premium. You must know that. You cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything. It's too much to give your life just for money. No. Let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life. I hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money. You should chase after God. Chase after God. Seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom. That's what is meant by his righteousness here. And he said all other things will be added. Let's hurry up. When you give your time, you give your life. Never forget that. The reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary. Number one, you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your, your skill. Number two, you are exchanging your time. These are the two things that go for your salary. You cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life. Because you're 24 hours. If you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment, how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom? Imagine that I cannot come for Koinonia now and say because I'm trying to do something there, I'm looking for money somewhere. It's terrible. I'm failing in my assignment. It doesn't matter how much money I make. So you have to be careful so that you don't just, that's the language of those we call hustlers. Hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money. Right? They have, their time is valueless to them. So they can give it away just for anything. My time is precious to me because my life is measured in time. God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment. And while it is true that I want to activate streams of income, it will not be at the detriment of my assignment. And so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible. Praise the Lord. Write this down. There is a, an equation for financial freedom. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind. That you have money does not mean you are financially free. Financial freedom is equal to financial abundance, the availability of the resources plus time. There are people who have money but no time. No time to pray, no time to build, no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families. No time at all. They tell you no time. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. They started doing that when they were 20. Now they are 55. I'm busy. I'm busy. And then they die. Because on the seventh day, God rested. You, you are in the ninth day. You have not rested. You will die. Hallelujah. Let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century. In the school of prosperity, especially in the 21st century, almost any and everything has a demand. There is a demand for almost any and everything. This is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years, in the next five years, should be poor. Impossible. There is a demand for just any and everything. The world is a global village. There is a demand for just anything. See? Right now, even people's laugh has brought them millions. Somebody just laughs. Is it not your ringtone? Oh, yes. Somebody just laughs around and does everything. That's side A. Does another one. That's side B. You see that? And you put it as your ringtone. And you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of god Just for being fine. 
can wipe poverty away from your life forever. Right? Just for being not fine, you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways. It depends on the message that is being communicated. Um, I'm just I'm speaking generally. There is a demand for everything. Absolutely everything. No matter how little the skill is, there is a demand for it. Look at how pastors, you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors. Allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge, scrounge after that. From today till Wednesday, non-stop, I have ministrations every day. I have a meeting morning and evening. You will think there are already enough pastors. No, no, there are 7.2 billion people. Right? You think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever. It's because you do not know how many people are on earth. When you know there is a demand for anything. And I told you the formula. Once there is a demand, there is money for it. You go and meet somebody and say, borrow me 10 naira. He'll tell you, I cannot. But sell something, he will pay you for it. In the 21st century, brothers and sisters, you are only limited by your creativity. You are only limited by your creativity. Ah! There is a mighty financial army that will rise. Even if you don't pay attention to this, I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. Can have a contract with most of the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people. And they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets. And it's blessing people. Millions of people are buying it. And this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything. That's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his song, but he became rich because you bought the thing. Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain.
Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand for your gifts or your potentials. The reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it. The reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it. Let me tell you, in the world of prosperity, you lose by becoming like every other person. Your uniqueness is what stands you out. Your competitive advantage. There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon and unique. I hear the chains of him falling I hear the chains falling. I will give you four streams of income that can help you. That's, that's all we'll touch for this. Um, there are at least eight. I call them recession-proof streams of income. They are all in the Bible. But I'll give only four here. School of Ministry students will add two more. And then that's about it. Any other one? has to be in a business or a corporate platform ready Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 if we can get NIV please give us NIV quickly I hear the chains can we get NIV okay fine Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 please let's save time Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, Give portions to seven. Yea, to eight. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, It says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Uh, who has that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down. Land. Open bracket. Land and anything you can get under it, on it, and above it. It's all called land. You know it as real estate. Land. Together with anything under it, on it, and above it. Look at me. You are not rich if you do not own land. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Write it so that you don't forget. I don't care what else you have. You are poor if you do not own land. Because land is a fixed asset. It cannot be stolen. Even if a bomb falls on that land, it can only affect what is on it. You will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you. Land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. 
I'll stop there. Land. Two, education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said, before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate? They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate how many people. 100,000 times all the people we have, including all those who are online. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't need to talk louder. I don't need to shout more. The exact same thing. Ten years after I have preached this, or I have said this, or I have delivered this lecture, I will still be getting paid from it. Education. One of the cheapest aspects of education is writing. The ability to document your persuasion. For as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear, you can document it. The only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense. They are just hungry people looking for money. So there is no excellence and no creativity. And at the end of it, only 100 copies are sold. And the bookstore tells you, please get out. But there is a key. Purpose-driven life. Right? Rick Warren, that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. It was so profound they had to create a workbook for it love and respect there are many books that have become bestsellers rediscovering the kingdom because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents could there be a persuasion in your life right now that you need to birth and bring out you are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying crying for food and crying for water the only limitation to your life should be the voice of God not lack of creativity it's God speaking to us education number three your job your job paid employment it's a stream of income so your job is not bad you can get a job at least you receive salary from it and the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs because you know every month a fixed income is coming so it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build how many have i given uh, let's stop at the last one transportation the only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around we love oil and gas but we hate transportation how unwise I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things but did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth there must be movement you studied something that was a clue to your prosperity but you forgot remember what we i think it was in biology social studies mr niger huh? biology mr niger movement as part of the quality of living things is that not true that was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting every day immediately after koinonia now listen every week i don't know how okay i have an idea you cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000, 
and then they used it to buy two phones foolish person whereas the phone is not bringing you anything there are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there and you can't make any call you cannot even browse whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf these are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive right the 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 the, the driver that carries me around he started driving me three years ago and within that three years he has bought two extra cars two extra cars and i tell you a large percentage of that was for my money think about that they are always happy they you never see them frowning they are smiling because every time he sees me he sees his destiny and for as long as i need his services i will keep paying for it how many of you are sitting on millions hundreds of thousands roaming around whereas or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved you want to show people now you live in a three bedroom flat that is empty with one small mattress in one of the rooms and people think you are a big boy you are not big you are small whereas something would have been bringing you income let me tell you something the transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied it's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly from the first day the car goes out by evening money is coming 5 a.m in the morning brothers and sisters there are people who get up begging whether it is town service whether it is wherever i know someone who bought kekena pep right he just bought one i think second year or something like that and then when he bought that kekena pep i think about 12 12 000 comes in every week 12,000 he just went and registered it with the association national union those their union and then he's around praising the lord and giving tight every week and you are saying this guy is he a thief or no 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 do you have to be smart to do that not necessarily you just have to be poor and that's why i told you there is no reason brothers and sisters for people to be poor what's wrong with five people coming together you all have 50 50 000. have a very well defined term you don't need to wait till you have one million what's wrong with three or four people coming together all of them having hundred thousand and you buy a golf in four five months you are broken even and you can buy another one and then buy another one while that is happening you are busy increasing your financial intelligence how much have you spent from january to this year to, to now some of you millions look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people how many times did they pay them arrears of millions what did they do with it they went to a club and called friends and blew the money they blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived and yet we keep blaming god but tonight god is giving somebody intelligence you don't need to register any company you don't need to know anybody with an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know. But there are many people sitting on you. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand demand the transport sector there are many people dreaming i will go into oil and gas i will go into oil and gas. how much do you know it takes to start oil and gas you want to be a thief can't you start gradually how many people are sitting on five million ten million they are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions you have eaten your own prosperity by yourself how many people have started popcorn popcorn inside abu is that not true popcorn i'll never forget years ago when one of i think that was in 2006 or 7 i wanted to start one popcorn machine popcorn business in new Bamadi, and i wanted somebody to manage for me so i needed to i sent him to go and do a research for me on everything i was surprised when the 
the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day. You are eating, you bought it 30 naira. But many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it? Graduation matric. It can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard. Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. Um, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon, you'll find out that the difference between you and graduation is one exam. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor when there is such a demand? A de there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more. And about 60% of those people are ladies. Count the number of saloons you have in your campus. Are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10. Servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people. If you have 1,000 more of those things, it will still not be enough. And yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been, we have been wired to consume. That's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are working. Many of us are, are going into food. Question. If we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No. If I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine. Wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow today with your life that as much as god grants you the grace you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender say it after me Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow hundred thousand. You will borrow five million. Until you find out that you are in debt of five hundred million. And you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you as you are sitting down right now. Not just from anything. Maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debt that you have eaten everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key you borrowed money for it you are smiling 
but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it you will be a slave forever it is one of the babylonian system that's why you notice i never talked about borrowing i'm sorry i know that this insults a lot of your business people, but i don't believe it in business we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt you use good debt as a leverage you use bad debt for consumption no debt is the kingdom's way no debt say it shout it again after hearing all that i've told you today you can choose to be emotional about what i've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit or you can make up your mind and say this is it i've come to the end of myself lord i'm ready to begin to take decisions listen the key to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change it must change listen a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change you will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator in nigeria many people are the recipients of change the wealthy people are the initiators of it i choose to be in that category i refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a a, a victim whatever happens i write it in. no sir we are going to pray rise up on your feet psalm 66 please psalm 66 verse 12 Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, rise. This is a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says we went through fire we went through water we went through times of hardship and turbulence but by your wisdom you have brought us into a wealthy place i announce to you koinonia there is a place called the wealthy place there is a place it's a place of plenty it's a land of abundance and it is absolutely left to you i read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over, take over, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room at Area BZ, I remember getting up and making a vow. I said, Lord, this is it. If this is what it takes to be blessed, then I insist that I must be blessed. I read Miles Munro's books, Discovering Your Potential. Just that one book. Please hear me. And I made a vow. I told myself, I know 
that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow I am willing to pay the price I told myself even if I have to leap into the wealthy place I'm going there I made up my mind I said I'm tired I made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything the, the kind of money that will take me to hell no and for me to live in integrity I knew that I would pay the price I cried to the God of Israel I remember it as clear as I'm looking at you tears were running down my eyes and I said oh God I pray that you will help me I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life I continued like that but nothing really happened watch this we're about to round up I want to challenge you 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever experientially never to return there haven't done everything I did I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. that night it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. And they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things. And I went that night. I will never forget. I had just a bag, my one bag that they gave me, and recharge card, a rechargeable lantern, sorry. I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands. I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours non-stop in tongues. I said, Lord, enough is enough. I'm tired of this situation. Listen, for as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow, so I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television signing checks of millions i didn't have all of that but i was determined to break out of poverty watch this i wanted to move and the holy spirit told me to stay back look at this embarrassment after everybody had given then the holy spirit told me you can now go in a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way i carried my back that was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed, help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. Where you are determined, all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings, you set your face like a flint. And I went there. When I went, I dropped it on the altar. Some people were laughing at me, of course, because the bag was not looking like something. I'm sure they would just send it to one orphanage. But that was my eyes. Listen. And I returned back to my seat outside. I stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times. And while I stayed there, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And he said, son, from this day you have entered wealth that's what the holy spirit he said from this day you have entered wealth i will never forget the next day 6 20, 6 10 on the dot in the morning somebody calls me shaking and says are you joshua selman i say yes i say who are you he said i don't know you but the holy spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life please i need your account number i said what in the world is this a few days later the chairman, board of trustee of this ministry, he's a general now. He called me and I think he transferred, how much was it? 400,000 or something into my account. No, no, no. He first gave me 150,000. He said, the Lord led me to tell you that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera. They were doing a probe. <sighs> Within a span of about one week, having prepared myself, the door started opening mysteriously. 
in less than four to five months I made my first million I will never forget how it felt that day not borrow not father's money not uncle and auntie not our money I just stood there and I said there is a wealthy place listen God will not step in and break poverty in your life just because you are an adult it's too small a reason to see the hand of God this is where many Christians authorize Satan to destroy their lives are we together now come you are in bondage and you want liberty this is your place of destiny this is where you are Egypt and the Lord is saying there is a condition there is a state of heart you don't have the power to deliver yourself but you have the will to say Lord I am committed to serving you but poverty is stopping me from buying books I want to buy the books are we together I can't pray because the rent is expired the landlord is not a spirit he's alive he's a real person he's coming tomorrow and God says you mean you want me to clear the way for you to serve me God says that's the kind of prayer that I like I say now the challenge with many believers hear me and this is where we strengthen Satan listen carefully tonight our unwillingness to live for God and to serve him are we together versus his outstretched hand and his power to deliver us God wants to deliver us but the justification the basis upon which his hand will come upon us many of us disqualify ourselves because our motive for deliverance is not genuine there is only one motive one let my people go that they may do what go and serve me serve me they may go and serve me this has nothing to do with being a man of god please listen this has nothing to do with being a pastor this has nothing to do with being a pastor's wife serving god is the lifetime assignment of everyone what you call your job or any avenue is just a doorway let me tell you brothers and sisters it says i shall not die but why will i live but live and declare live and proclaim the justification for being alive and being victorious is a heart and a life that is committed to promoting the kingdom you are representing him and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom there is no devil strong enough to take your life it says many are the afflictions of the righteous the bible says but the lord delivered him from them how many affliction is not unusual are we together jesus himself said let us go to the other side and he met a storm meeting a storm is not a sign that you that um you are not a christian jesus met a storm on the all-knowing god said let's go to the other side between prophecy and manifestation he met a storm so meeting a storm in your life is not the issue the storm overcoming you and making rubbish and nonsense out of your life is where your victory becomes questionable there are many of us here right now with all kinds of storms standing before you dead sentences given by doctors some of you are holding it and wondering can God change it there are many of us in situations that only God in heaven you can't even share it with human beings because they do not have the faith to believe a man can be going through this and still be alive but there is a God in heaven brothers and sisters you are gathered tonight before that God in heaven there are men who are held in bondage God has anointed and called them but the doors of ministry will never open you know why because many of them don't want to serve God doing ministry is not serving God no sir make no mistakes about it you're a man of God here pay close attention let me show you why you keep getting disappointment in ministry you can be anointed praying in tongues raising the dead all that is stories if your heart is not committed to serving the purposes of the kingdom forget about all of these things most people want power when you see a man of God walking in the anointing when you see crowds when you see all kinds of results happening in the life of a man and a ministry many people admire they want it 
you see god has no problem giving it but your motive your motif your motif oh god give me twins god says even if you want 10 i can give you what is your motive let me tell you something this issue of committal to serve god this committal to follow and pursue hard after god is a big secret a big secret the justification behind the stagnancy of many people and the motivation behind them leaving that place to another realm let my people go oh lord change my financial status god says i can it is within my power but what for and he said god i'm just tired of poverty god says that's not enough reason that's if i give you too much money with no assignment it will kill you it will destroy you the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them lord give me a crowd of thousands of people make me a man of influence lord let people love me let me just be a celebrity and god says it's all within my power justify your reason and he says lord i came from a background of inferiority god says so what that's not a reason for me to trust you with influence and grace but when a man's heart becomes resolute lord grant me finances so that one day i will override the building of your house god says you want to do this for me and then you quote his scripture back for the sake of thy house i desire thy prosperity and god says that's it you've satisfied the condition to see my hand lord heal my body i want to serve in your house but the department i want to join requires energy and lord i have found out that i have a medical condition that cannot allow me carry chairs and god says who gave you that condition the moment anything stands between you and serving god it has become god's enemy is god's own fight let me tell you how to join god and satan you service let your problem follow you to the altar of service and stand back and god says whatever stands in the way of any man serving me has become my enemy including a man are we together now when he when 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 the captain of the host of israel appeared before joshua he said are you for us or against you he said all that is nonsense whoever is on god's side is the person i'm for if you are against god i strike you if you are for god we are a team god is not a christian god is on the side of whoever has the heart to glorify the father and to see his kingdom come and his purposes established that you're a christian is no guarantee that you will get the partnership of god your heart is god preaching to someone tonight lord i want you to launch me far i want you to change my life you have said it's the year of triumph and god says it's not a lie brother there is more anointing and unction than you have ever dreamt to walk in leave all these kindergarten visions here and there there are superior dimensions but your motive you, you pray for 40 days but your motive corrupts it from day one and god says come to a point where your heart is committed to serving me and i will not release do you know my 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 project with god is to come to a point where god is not afraid of doing anything with me or committing anything to me i want to get to that level of trust with god where whether the virtues are with him or with me it makes no difference because it's all his own come on now whether that anointing is in the throne room or walking through my life it makes no difference because it is for his glory tonight hear me it is god's desire to heal you it doesn't take rocket science but now when you become free and energetic what do you do with that strength that's the question god is asking lord i used to sing well but then i had an infection that destroyed my voice and god says but i've never seen you commit yourself to singing in my house and lifting up my name and now you want me to clear that throat condition so that you go back and the devil will use your voice for nonsense and god says no way you can cry you can roll on the floor if your motive is not intact forget about the experience of the power of god 
Are we together now? Say, Lord, say it, everybody, Lord, I declare that as you bless me, as you heal me, as you deliver me, I vow to serve you with my life. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning Take my mind. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. No turning back. No man forsake me. Still I will follow. No turning back. Hey, no turning back. No man forsake me. Still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Come on, sing it before him. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. assumption to assume tonight that everybody wants to follow Jesus he said I've, I've discovered that there are people who genuinely are not interested in following God I'm not talking of self perfection I'm talking of a sincere committal to following Jesus genuinely with your life no way there are many parasites of Jesus financial parasites of jesus there are parasites of kingdom principles they want to use kingdom principles and mysteries as a ladder to become famous sir it doesn't work that way oh please hear me tonight there are people every time you hear a man of god talk about passion for jesus you think they are talking about ordination to ministry no sir is an addiction to see his kingdom come for god's sake what else will i be doing with my life if not lifting up his name jesus i lift up your name jesus i lift up your name that's what i do for a living jesus i lift up your name Lift your voice and say, Jesus, I lift up your name. If God cannot find his purposes fulfilled through your life, I tell you, forget about the outstretched hand of God. You hear me say this, don't let any man fool you. God is not a herbalist my brother is your heart god is looking for not tight not offering your heart not music not just energy my soul give me your heart give me your heart give me your heart i want your heart when we talk about jesus christ many people frown their face as if you are speaking against civilization the days that will come please hear me people of god the days that will come will require outspoken radical passion for jesus all this organized civilized nonsense that makes god look secondary will be the recipe for the dominion of darkness over the life of people oh i'm now 25 years 
don't don't make me look like a child i'm now 30 years i hope you know i'm now the director of a and b and c nonsense and that's the reason why you are david danced before god and his wife said her back king and keep your dignity and david looked at her and said hold on you don't even know the mystery of how you became my wife if you know it you will join me dancing i was a little boy with no hope no destiny did he read any book i was a smelly shepherd in the wilderness i danced my way beyond any king to get to the throne and now because i am here you carry your dignity the bible says god had him all and that woman died barren it was not the devil that made her barren let my people go not that they may go around causing trouble and wasting time and just counting age and growing older let my people go that they may go and serve me this issue of living for jesus serving jesus no let bless him accepting him into your heart there are many people when you talk about genuine surrender not coming out to recite an altar call i make up my mind i am for jesus forever they laugh at you they laugh at you because it doesn't make sense to them they don't see the need why should i give my life to jesus i want to be the god of my own self so you manage your life by yourself i want to be the god of my own self so you answer your prayer by yourself i want to be the god of my own self so you mismanage your life by yourself it says submit down to the mighty hand of god then resist the devil and he will flee you know i sincerely see a lot of people great men and women of god who want to walk in the anointing and i see the way they play games with submitting to the authority of christ you will never be trusted with certain dimensions of the anointing until god vets your passion you can't fake it there is a level of kingdom influence and power no it go to a harbor list you will still not get that dimension it takes your heart dead to christ not just living this one you have died to the purposes of the kingdom otherwise you cannot carry certain levels of grace no the kingdom has rules you you can fake it with men but not with god there is a dimension brothers and sisters where god vets your heart and sees that pastor femi will live and die for me i'm not it's not one leg in today and god is not sure of what you will become in 2019 no Basanko. everyone inside outside the overflows along the road listen i want to make a serious altar call now everybody sit down and listen carefully let me tell you something brothers and sisters coming to surrender your heart to jesus is not an initiation into a religion called christianity now are we together now where you are switching founders <laughs> from an idol worshiper you were worshiping stone are we together and now you say Kai, stone is not a better alternative so i come to another founder there are not 10 gods there is one god hear ye O israel the lord our god is one god i don't care who preaches what there is only one god the king eternal we can argue it but one day very soon the difference will be made clear there are people seated here listening to me i don't condemn you but brothers and sisters it's time to be serious with god 
shortly you're going to experience radical deliverances and healings and miracles but that is only useful when your heart is with God I don't care whether you have been a pastor for 10 years there are two altar calls I'm going to make in one right now please hear me carefully those following us online from any nation you're following just listen carefully you may not be able to run out but I want you to pay attention and participate number one there are people for you you have never made a genuine decision you have heard that people repent you have heard that people come to Jesus you have even given them transport money but genuinely from your heart my father is a pastor that's not what I'm saying I grew up in a church you are joking you have to come genuinely we gave our lives to Christ it's not an inheritance of a family you come personally the other day they blessed all of us together you are not born again it has to be genuine personal and conscious when I was a baby they baptized me come and join them as soon as I made that altar call you come and join them are we together number two there are those who the war of passion and seriousness with God there is this fear of getting serious with God for some reason you think if I get serious with God my, I won't make it in life the moment I'm serious with God I won't get a nice husband uh, men these days don't like serious ladies who, who lie to you which men which one are you talking about the drunk are there the smoke are there or a genuine Holy Ghost born again visionary brother if I'm serious with God when it's time to chop in the office my conscience will not allow me chop that's a joke is it that God cannot bless you must you bribe to rise that's how everybody is doing it you are lying that's not how every that's how you know or you have been taught that everybody is doing it Elijah said I'm the only one God said keep quiet there are 7,000 others who have not bowed to bear please hear me there are people here God wants to visit your family but there is no one in your family who is born again and you will be the first tonight because God needs an access point to your family the system of the kingdom is such that God must find a portal within a territory to manifest his purposes within that territory if and when God does not find a man his power is still limited there must be an individual through sacrifice and alignment who will be able to host the purposes of the kingdom within a sphere to allow the possibilities of God find expression so if God wants to come to your family he moves everywhere and everybody says I'm, I'm, I'm too busy he comes to your mother she says I'm too busy looking for money he comes to your father I'm too confused to give my life to you comes to your brother no I'm, I'm too I'm too I want to marry now God please go somewhere he comes to your sister I'm looking for men there's no time to look for God and God says I want to step into this family no one has given me space if God can find one person he, he needs to take it step by step when he finds you the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one and before you know it someone starts having a strange dream in your family he lies down and he has a dream of rapture he won't share it but that dream would torture him till he thinks about it he would get up alone and you find out for the first time he didn't steal money again he saw angels he saw the white throne he doesn't need to know what it is his spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things but tonight you must come genuinely to Jesus don't come out here if you are playing games it has let me tell you the implication of coming out here you must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong dangerous and ungodly relationships by the grace and the Spirit of God you just need the will the grace is what you receive here number two you must be ready and willing to be committed to the house of God to grow this dilly darling with God is the recipe for failure I'm too young to reject God the fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life I claim I'm too big for God 
before we continue tonight i'm going to count one to ten listen everyone heard me loud and clear overflow outside overflow along the road as i'm speaking to you the holy ghost is probing you those of you standing on the fence there i see you and the lord is speaking to you online probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world and you are saying but i'm far distance is no barrier it doesn't matter you are still on earth everyone on earth will be judged whether you are in london whether you are wherever i'm going to make this altar call now i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to jesus i know you will be healed young and old i don't care how long you have been you are saying lord i'm tired of living my life the way i want i want to hand it genuinely inside outside start running one to ten one genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain two Coming. don't say there's no space even if you have to line up outside no problem this is your salvation with God greater than any miracle tonight just find somewhere to stand if the place is full keep lining up there right outside five someone is still thinking about it and saying apostle I'm a nice person have never done anything wrong it's just that I've not declared Jesus join them by the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved you didn't do anything wrong but that very nature of darkness is resident upon you all of you who are standing here please don't look at anyone lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to jesus everyone who is standing stretch right outside and those online talk to jesus right now and say jesus i come to you i come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated i expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of god lift your voice and cry to jesus lord i'm saved but my father is not saved he's on his way to hellfire and i know it my mother is not saved i know today that if the trumpet sounds they are going to hell for sure I know my sister is not saved my husband is not saved my wife is not saved my colleague in office is not saved Lord I know that pastor is not saved he has a church but he's not saved pray cry your heart to jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the savior he wants to reveal himself first as savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me i see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old i don't care what you have done i don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you're going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart it says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god 
unto salvation. The Lord wants to give you a new beginning. I know you came to be healed, but he wants to take over your destiny. With your hands lifted to Jesus who is here, not in heaven, right here in this place. Say after me, passionately and sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. This night, I have heard your word and I make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days I will live for you I will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night I hand over my life to you say it again I hand over my life to you be my Lord, be my Savior. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of the flesh is broken. Every association that is not of God, I am separated from them this night. I declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today i am a child of god and i will live for him forever hallelujah keep your hands lifted jesus look at the ones you died for when you hung upon that cross you saw them and today we are glad to present them to you this is why you put this meeting together we lift them up as trophies worthy trophies for your blood worthy trophies for your death and lord i decree and declare that this ones you have brought tonight none will be lost i speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today i declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today i declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation will roll it away right now in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven by the mercies of god i declare that you have a new beginning with god you are empowered by the spirit to live a victorious life in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone i'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what i want you to do um protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details i know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in god that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please i hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because i'll start praying for the sick now praise the lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets tuesdays 4 p.m just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down rema chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the holy spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit 
and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth. All these things are very important for your growth. I don't want you to waste this experience. Praise the Lord. I bless you in the name of Jesus and shortly the Lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions. So let's do this very quickly. Appreciate them as they go. Just guide them whether or not you belong to any department. You're a member of Koinonia. You see any of them moving, just guide them as they go out. Quickly, let's honor them, Koinonia, as they do so. Is that the best you can do? Hallelujah. Please coordinate them, coordinate them. Let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I never see anyone like you. I never see Where's Sam? Help me. I never see anyone like you. I never see Everyone stand up. Let's pray some prayers before. Let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Please say be serious in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight visit me. This is my destiny. Give me strange results. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Visit me. In the name of Jesus, visit me. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Step into my destiny. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Shout it again in the name of Jesus. Every long-standing issue in my life and my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long standing challenges are you praying tonight Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold a hand. I want you to agree. Say, in the name of Jesus, 
I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any truth shall agree, as touch it. Believe in what you are saying. You are opening doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life, my family, and my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit behind the tragedies in my life, in my destiny, and my family. Expose them tonight. Lift your voice and pray. For the light shines in darkness. Pray for the light shines in darkness. Let your light shine, O God. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Lord, light 
Just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing. But listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives come at you when a spirit, listen carefully. When a spirit latches onto your life and destiny, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I don't care what you do physically. Remember spiritual intelligence. You can be doing the right physical things, but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo, representing a covenant, an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up. When people gather like this, hear me. They come with prayer requests. They come with problems. But you see, behind those problems are spirits. Are we together now? The spirits that are responsible for lack of favor. The spirits that are responsible for a hard life. The spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry i prayed over the father's picture i've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that but you could look at the leg and see the bone the bone the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone what happened to the man he went to bed in the night brothers and sisters i think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up the bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness you want to move forward but there is an embargo the solution is not counseling you need an encounter with power everybody say power listen the power of the holy spirit is not a negotiator it's an enforcer when the power of God comes, it does not ask you whether you want to be free. Your assignment is to be open till it reaches you. When it comes, it scatters anything that does not look like God. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. I will pray for you now. The Spirit of God is upon me. Lift your hands, everyone. There are people here right now. I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out. Usher's grace for you and protocol. I know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road. But I want to pray. Everyone, please lift your hands. The Lord is speaking to me. There are people right now in your silence. Hold on. Maybe just this. The power of God will begin to come upon you. What is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance. That deliverance is equal to breakthrough, equal to new levels. But lift your hands. There are people here who are under strong yokes of delay. And the Lord gives me an instruction. We will just lift our hands and be silent. That's all the instruction. And inside and outside, the Spirit of God will begin to locate them. Are we together? When that happens, then we'll take it off from there. That's the first thing God wants to do tonight. Just lift your hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. And there are people and families and those following on, online. Except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay. That spirit must leave you. Are we together? So keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, wherever they are right now, I stretch my hands. According to the instructions you have given me, inside and outside. Right now, I see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay. Keep your hands lifted. Bring them out. 
outside there just the angels of the lord are walking i'm seeing like smoke just moving across lines line by line inside and outside when it comes to you when you are under that influence that's the end of it right now i command it the word of the lord is upon this prophecy in the name of jesus no instruments don't play anything outside there is massive deliverance happening separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it bring them out young old destinies that have been delayed tonight there is serious grace for deliverance those of you lifting up your hands be sensitive be sensitive we're in a prophetic atmosphere right now bring them i see people outside Kai, my god 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 many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace for open doors right now break every chain in my life keep your hands lifted watch it happen now that's the instruction god gave me that grace breaking chains now i'm speaking across the congregation i have been seeing this for weeks padlocks opening in the realm of the spirit that's what the lord is showing me Padlocks opening, opening, opening right now.
I open them. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow. Your influence is on Fire is coming on 32 people and this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars. I hear family altars right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, I set those altars now on fire. Right now, 32 people, I see in the realm of the spirit, I command it right now, I command it. Everyone on this ground, under the influence of any altar, now, be free now. Help them please, help that lady. Be free now. So Right now, be free now. Be free now. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of your own. Everyone lift your hands. Say this after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it seriously. Say in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction hear the word of the lord as i shout the name jesus i command you to live my life at the count of three shout jesus there will be an exiting of many strange spirits one two three shouting i command spirits you go now you go now you go now you go now inside and outside any spirit resident within any man's life any woman's life causing pain as I pray for grace for you in Jesus name because what I see now is not a nice scene the Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus there are people who are going to vomit physical things that's why I said it's a messy scene I, I apologize we're very neat and organized people inside and outside but in the name of Jesus right now any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now one two three i command every stranger go now every poison every devil causing sicknesses every fibroid every devil every enchantment The Lord is showing me a vision of a lady. If you're here, I want you to come out. I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice. And they are giving somebody, everybody a substance. Like a drink. Something to take. 
they gave everybody including you and you took it where is that person please if you are here i want you to come out quickly it's a is a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody where are you come your deliverance comes now I'm under the shadow of your wings. Help me. Your influence is all upon me. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all upon me. Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State, what happened to you? Hold on. I converted. My Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Eh? Yes. With who? I don't know. My mother, I don't know. They she brought somebody, and you people entered a covenant and they gave you something. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. I command that covenant, that demonic thing, tie your life. And this miracle service, it lives now. In the name of Jesus. You too? Where are you from? I'm from Kogi State. You are from Kogi State. The same thing. Hold my hands. Look at me. I command that devil to leave you now. Whatever yoke. Please don't come out if I don't call your case. Are you part of them, Mr. Man? Young man, you're part of them? In the name of Jesus, I set you free. Bring the, you, are, you too? come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out I'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family the Lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I break the yoke over your life now out now there is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly i want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep her where's the mic how long you you are an usher. You, how long? Three weeks. Eh? Three weeks. For three weeks, you've been caught. Lay your hand on your chest. You too. Lay your hands on your chest. You too. Ah? Substance. Even your what? Like hold on, please. Guys, hold on. Yours is what? The substance you spoke about. What substance? Like even some medicine to take in the family. Lift and your hands. Medicine. Lift your hands. Leave both of them. I'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand. Your hand will start shaking. And then the Lord is bringing you strange deliverance. It will start from your hands down to your body. I place the word of God upon your life right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Both of you, look at me. Both of you, cough out blood. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon you. It ends now. In the name of Jesus, out right now. There are spirits responsible for this. Kite. Ta, 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 ta. Do you know what I just saw? The Lord opened my eyes and I saw like a cage. And in the cage, I saw snakes. That's all I'm seeing. That's all I'm seeing. Lift your hands, everybody. The Lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation. There are people who represent that oppression. It will leave now. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. Whose destiny is that? Right now, whose destiny is that? I wave my hands in the name of Jesus. Please release them for your glory. Release them now. Help them, please, Jesus Christ. Inside, outside. 
be out of that cage now I see snakes serpents some of you see them in your dreams they must go now they are leaving you now now they are leaving you now I command liberty 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 hallelujah I'm hearing a name Jane Jane like J-A-N-E Jane 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 I'm also hearing another name victory is it victory like victory victory please don't come out if that's not your name what's your name Jane your name is victory where are you from Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kaza Chat. Kaza Chat. Is it Kaza Chat? Who is that? Kaza Chat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kaza Chat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kaza Chat. Is it? I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom. Is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom, nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Listen, that is your name. You are why are they here I call their names I'm going to lay hands on you except for you I don't even know why the rest of you are but please I want you to believe the moment I lay my hands on you something will happen the Lord is saying I should start with you Lord open her door now in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands reproach leaves your life now in the name of Jesus Christ Reproach lives your life now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Reproach lives your life now. Reproach lives your life now. Hold my hands. Call your parents and tell them the Lord is giving them breakthrough. Your family, your entire family, Delta State, breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold on. The serious witchcraft over your life hold my hands Lord the Lord is asking me to walk with you this is how your destiny is opening up that's what the Lord is asking me to do walk with you to walk with you something is happening it's a prophetic act you will not help her to walk with you opens in the name of Jesus your destiny opens up now in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands this girl Lift your hands where you are. I'm seeing wind around you. And the Lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. And the Lord said is restoration. I stretch my hands upon you right now. I release that grace for restoration. Restoration. There are seven other people who will tap from this anointing. This same anointing right now. Seven. Seven. Right now. The anointing for restoration is coming upon them. Receive it right now, wherever you are. Zabata kata la kata frate kese brende kata. Lekate pras kata barato shubre diara. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people. God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. Seth said the lord is stepping into his life right now 
Seth. Is there someone with that name? Seth. Have you found the mama I'm talking about? Don't worry, let them come. Let them come. Doesn't matter. With your daughter. Mama. Kai. There is the spirit of death on your family. I'm going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. You came from where, mama? from Edo State. From Edo State? Yes, but I live in Wusasa. You live in Wusasa? Yes. But you came from Edo State? Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Seth. You too? You are an usher? Okay. Kai, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you. But I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took what's the name of this thing they take? We we and you were high. You were about to cross the road. And then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it, just running and killing you. There is somebody here. You smoke. Please don't be. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's not like you are not a serious person. But this thing, you started taking it from when you were small. And it's destroying your life. You want to be free, but you can't leave it. Please don't be ashamed. Come out now. Quickly, please. If you are still thinking about it, remain on your seat. Some, you have to be free now. Come out. I'm seeing one. You wore jeans dress. Like your shirt. I don't know if it's your shirt. It's jeans. Who is that? No, no. There, there's another. Come out. I will pray for you. This, this is not the only guy. Just keep them here. I will pray for him. I'm seeing another person outside the second overflow. You are standing on the road. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. Speaking to you. This thing they roll and they smoke. And then you even, I'm seeing you swallowing a drug. I don't know what drug is that. Please come out. Come out. Clap for them as they come out. Join them quickly and come. Whether I mention your case or not, you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction. Indian helm, whatever, forward march. Come here, your salvation comes, sir. Please appreciate them, clap for them. Some of them are not bad people, it's a spirit. Don't be ashamed. Please usher, uh, direct them so that they come here. I'm seeing up to five ladies in this group up to five ladies come don't be ashamed don't let anyone laugh at you please this is a miracle service join them we we codeine whatever it is join them whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not come and join them please quickly that addiction must be broken now who can stand against the lord no one can no Coming, the devil is a liar. Who can stand against our king? No one can, no one will. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. It's a river of the cheese. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a very small boy, very small boy, very small boy. We're supposed to join them. Young man, please hold on. Please, if the parents of the boy are here, don't flog him. Please. This is a very small boy. You will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing. He saw an elderly person smoking it. Come out. There is a small boy here. I know what. Drag him out. Come. Where is the boy? Come out. Please. Gentlemen, I'm going to pray for you. Don't worry. You are not bad people. I'm seeing a number of ladies, up to five ladies. They are refusing to come out. There's nothing to be embarrassed. Jesus Christ wants to set you free. This is a miracle service. It's not like you are evil people. That's not what we are saying. 
it's a spirit you don't stop by counseling mama there is a spirit of death over your family and i will pray for you i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is this your daughter what's your name my dear is this mic working can you add lillian, the voice lillian. lillian what do you want god to do for you i want god to heal you what's wrong with you i've been having problems with my tongue no 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 you had a dream huh you saw a snake you can't even remember it and from that day you started having serious problem with your stomach huh what's wrong with you i've 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 got to test and, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? How long has it been? It's, it's out of three years now. Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now. Assuming a brother has been trusting God to marry this sister, do you think the brother will marry her? Please help me. Do you think he will marry her? You look at her now and you think she's five or six months pregnant, but she's not pregnant. Kai. There is a lady who has refused to come out. The power of God is going to come upon her outside. You are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here i'm seeing the angel of the lord outside that lady you were a sincere lady but i, I don't know if it's um, another lady i don't want to say what i'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that i see that i may not be able to talk about i'm, I'm asking you to come out god wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of god is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles yes, i have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam i will pray for you mama yamuke you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak english or whatever any language please if i call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing restoration to your life. This is what I am seeing. And the Lord is asking me to pray for you. Can I pray for you, ma'am? I will pray for you. I have to pray. I'm seeing not you, but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident, traveling to Abuja, and having an accident we have to pray i'm not saying it will happen once god reveals it is broken lord jesus stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy you don't have to know her please stretch your hands and pray lord we avert death we avert death now in the name of jesus christ we avert death by the power of the holy ghost mama Is there a name like Gracilda? Is it Gracilda or Gracilda? Gracilda or Gracilda, something like that. Gracilda, Gracilda, something like that. If that sounds like your name, I'm sorry if I don't mention it well. The Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Gracilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come out. Eh? Jacinta? No. But come, where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria, I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand. 
anybody that is not designed by God, I separate you and him forever. Say amen. In Jesus' name. Gracilda. Gracilda. I'm hearing Gracilda. Something will die. Please. If it's not you, no problem. But that's what I'm hearing. Mama, let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. New beginning for you. Hold up, please. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, lay your hands on your stomach. Kai. Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies, you are inside here. There is an embargo of barrenness on your family. Fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo. You don't even know. It's in your family. It may not be in your life. But I'm seeing it right now. The angel of the Lord is locating two ladies right now. And is breaking that embargo. Thank you, Father. I put the word of God upon this prophetic word. That embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you. Mama, I decree and declare, let hardship live your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, let hardship live your life. In the name of Jesus. Hold on. I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it. This is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance here. This is somebody's deliverance. The power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place. This is somebody's deliverance. This is somebody's deliverance. Lord, set them free right now. Right now. Right now. I'm seeing something rolling around this row. This row. This row. This row. Shala sobaria taskabandabria. There's no hiding. There's no hiding. Someone in this row. Someone in this row. Someone in this row. Hardship over your family is being broken right now. I'm stretching my hands. This row. Right there. Father, locate that person right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, come. I want you to rejoice. Look at me. The Lord, hold on. The Lord is saying I should tell you that where you have been crying, you will begin to laugh. You have been crying for 30 years and the Lord is saying your breakthrough has come. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please shoot for me. Come, madam. Hold my hands. The Lord is there and should tell you it's your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your season of laughter. Your season of laughter. Look at me. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her hands be loose. Your hands are tied. I lose your hands in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors. That's what the Lord is saying. Open doors. The Lord has said you have waited too long. It's time for the door of your destiny to be open. Open doors. Come. There is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you. Hold my hands. Leave her now. Out. Out. 
when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you are a small girl but the things you know are what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray for these gentlemen before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, sir. who shot you i'm a soldier i was shot by my colleague Meduguri. you are meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you eh? yes. but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you Hi. you are a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your crutch up look at this look at this Look at this. Walk as fast as you can. Don't be afraid. Turn around. Turn around. Come. Because your wound is not healing. There is a wound, but that is not healing. From today, I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord who has perfected this leg will also perfect you. Where are you now? You are in Zaria. You are still in the force? Yes. You are still in the force? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Do you believe God can favor you? Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you. Huh? Look at me, brothers and sisters. I want to break this addiction from your life now. Are we together? you are very sincere people some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends some of you were initiated into these things by spirits i'm going to lay my hands on you while the congregation whether your child is here or not whether your brother is here or not as you are praying you are sowing a seed for your own home are you hearing what i'm saying stretch your hands don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any it's none of your business Koinonia is, a, is like a hospital. Stretch your hands. I will lay my hands on every one of them. Please, all of you should pray. I want to break addiction from your life. Don't feel condemned. Jesus will help you. It must be broken right now. Broken right now. Broken right now. Any kind of addiction. Out, out, now, out, out. In the name of Jesus, out. Look at this guy, out. Break from his life now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be set free. Be set free. As soon as I lay my hands on you, continue praying. Be set free. Addiction, break. Break in the name of Jesus. Hold my hands, darling. No addiction for liquor. No addiction for drugs. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head. Out of her life now. In the name of Jesus, I break that addiction. Ah. Hey, Jimmy. Come. the Lord is saying you should pray for this guy he will pray for you this guy needs serious prayer just lay your hands on him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus out out now I command that devil 
this is somebody that loves God but this addiction must be broken right now I break it right now I break it right now hold my hand you are a nice lady but we have to break this thing Lord please for your mercy let it be broken in her life in the name of Jesus Christ 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 hallelujah the Lord is asking me to minister to somebody I'm seeing a very interesting case you love God please don't be ashamed there is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to who is that person I want to pray for you now whether you are sick or not come and stand here particular pain reliever you can't help it you can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it it's a spirit pain reliever I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital God is visiting addictions this night quickly come don't sit back and say I'm all right allow God set you free let them come look at this pain I don't know what it is but I hear my spirit pain reliever whether you are sick whether you are fine the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it if you you can prefer to take it than to eat food it must go right now That's why God put this meeting to help people. There's one of you, fire is coming on you now. After that fire comes on you, then I'll pray for the rest. That's the instruction God is giving me. One of you, fire, literal fire, is coming upon you from heaven. As I lay my hands upon you, that addiction breaks right now. Stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of Jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the Holy Ghost broken now broken now if you have for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of Jesus broken now in the name of Jesus broken now in the name of Jesus it's broken now in the name of Jesus broken in the name of Jesus place your hand on your stomach God is not only setting you free he's setting you free from something else let her go now in the name of Jesus Christ Addiction broken now. Addiction broken now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Addiction is broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. Broken now. Hold my hands. Let her go in the name of Jesus Christ. There is a spirit that wants to destroy your life. I command now there's no hiding place for you by the power of the Holy Spirit you must be set free you are standing in for somebody no problem in the name of Jesus Christ supernatural freedom hallelujah praise the Lord now praise the Lord please accept you are nursing a child or doing something let's all rise those outside they are still praying for you no problem all other people please stand up rise up I want us to pray if you are yet to submit your prayer request please do it quickly the Bible says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come in one minute God can turn your life around everyone stretch your hands here and pray I'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart Lord I will not have to write this again pray 
I've written it. The Bible says after two days, please, if there are still people coming, bring it quickly. It says after two days, he will revive us and on the third day, he will raise us up. Online, here, please pray. I'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the God of heaven, visit men and women. Are you praying now? Pray. Shalakata prata katosa pretiash. Le prende kosoto prato kasha pradi karabalarabash. In the next one minute, I'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say, Lord, this is the last of the prayer requests that I'm having to write concerning this issue. Hallelujah. Agree with me with a loud amen in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now turn it around now let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now every case here said by men to be impossible we we collide that case with the power of god and we produce testimonies now Whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now. Whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now. Whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now. Whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now. Whoever must hear God for this prayer to be answered, hears God now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, may your people not have to write this again. Agree with me, may your people not have to write this again. Lord, I pray that before miracle service april let every request here be turned into a testimony may the fire and the anointing of the holy ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of Elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring god wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him god wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of god for performance for performance not just that you had god and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens 
Number three, this is personal to us as a family of faith. God has declared that is our year of triumph. I want you to believe this word, oh. Believe it. Otherwise, you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing. And then you will keep clapping. I'd like you to insist. We still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight. Insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify, make up your mind and say, no, God, I must stand before your people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As I speak over your life now, among the many things I want to speak, right now, I want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance. Many of you may not know what this anointing is. Listen carefully. Lift your hands. He said, who has ever heard that a city was built in one day? But as soon as Zion travels, there is a grace that is coming upon the people of God. Hear me. For performance. He said, blessed is she that believes. For unto her, not unto them. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This is not a corporate thing. Unto her there shall be. There are many things God has said that has not come to pass. There is a grace that engenders performance. I prophesy to you now. In the name of of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now is yours receive it now is yours receive it now is yours performance performance Performance, shake it la bata, la prete get a soto ropashiata. Grace for performance. Everything hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion, released by God, I decree within the next 30 days, it appears physically now. I prophesy the spirit of the Lord is upon me I speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of Jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by God. I put fire upon your feet and I command speed now. I put fire upon your feet. I command strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the Lord I think I was telling you yesterday that the Lord told me this 
you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is god in your life i release that dimension of favor now listen you can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of god you will struggle for nothing please hear me i prophesy it again whoever is lacking favor on his life i decree from this night carry favor inside outside everywhere online carry favor let me prophesy over finances whatever makes money run away from you don't say i'm talking about money you need it for what is coming in ahead whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury i turn it around now i turn it around now i pray for every student here the kind of results you have never seen i release it to you now i release it by the spirit i release it from the spirit in the name of jesus christ anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments they have trampled upon you i decree and declare may the angel of god responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest I pray for your loved ones. I pray for you. Whoever is called jobless here, yeah, before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction. Very clear direction for the next level of their lives. Could be maritally, could be geographic location, whatever it is. Hear God in this season like never before. Hear God in this season like never before. Lift your hands. I release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now sapoto so receive it right now from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and 
command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it whoever fights you goes down immediately whoever fights you goes down immediately hear me whoever mocks your passion for god goes down immediately whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may his prayer be answered whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in koinonia tonight may their prayers be answered every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside i tear that fail completely in the name of jesus favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit i'm praying it again begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit the mantle of honor that god has put upon my life god has put upon this ministry you are part of this vision you are under this grace there's no reason why it should not work in your life i command it to start speaking now no more dishonor in your life no more dishonor in your life hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night i release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night i don't know what took away your passion for the house of god but in the name of jesus may a love for the house of god like never before come upon you in the name of jesus the grace god released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you i speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked god in your life i command that in as you enter april from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter april it will not be april full it will be april wise it will be april breakthrough 
it will be April miracles. It will be April speed. Agree with me again. I'm praying with you. Between now and miracle service April, please hear me. Results together with tears in your eyes for joy, you will return with them. Results together with tears of joy in your eyes. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Lord, for performance. Thank you, Lord, for performance. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.